had the awesome pleasure of being able to participate and attend a showing of the great maestro Jean-Michel Basquiat. So let's go into some of the history of an introduction that really doesn't need to have one, but if you don't know about him, he was born in December 22nd, 1960, and he passed away August 12th, 1988. He was an American artist who rose to success during the 1980s and a part of the neo-expressionism movement. He and artists like Keith Haring and some other, uh, through mentorship of Andy Warhol, they were game changers in bringing and kicking in the door of creating a whole nother genre. And from being graffiti artists or categorized as graffiti artists, which a lot of them did not like to be considered, were able to bring themselves into what they created, into being recognized and into a world of, of art where it still to this day lacks diversity. Jean-Michel Basquiat joined the pantheon of artists and he changed that game when he had sold one of his paintings that was unknown name in 1982 which sold to a Japanese billionaire for record-breaking, the reports kind of vary, but around 85 million at this particular auction is what I'm seeing that was reported, one of the highest sums ever paid for an auction in U.S. from a U.S. produced art. And this sold around May 2022, which was very current. This show is, is in New York City. It's going to end soon. It's been about a year now that it's been running. And this was my first time to be able to, he was, I learned about him earlier on, didn't understand his work, but had a great appreciation for his work as I got to know who he was and what he was doing and appreciate his genius of what he was able to put down on the canvas from all facets of color and everything else. And this is at the Starrett Lee building on 26th street in New York city. Uh, this is not the entrance of the exhibition, but they asked you to use the 27th Street entrance. Very organized, and it's kind of like a huge building that's kind of the way it's curated and laid out. It's almost like a giant rectangle. And this is near the corner of 27th Street and 11th Avenue. So when you enter, you just kind of walk around, and everybody's uh, different facets of people, of course. So people from Italy there speaking Italian. Um, Japanese, Asian, all over the world have been coming to see this show and it's an incredible show and the work is my first time ever being exposed to really seeing some of his work in this this many works up close and personal but this show definitely gives you a great perspective if you've never seen his work or if you're familiar with his work, amazing it starts off automatically in, in, in a particular order where you get to see his work of what I was amazed at that I've never knew existed but there was a sketchbooks and tons of images of what he drew from childhood and the show progresses to where you kind of come into the later and current time of his life and absolutely incredible in my opinion it's one of the best curated shows that gives a snapshot and an up close personal look into his life with these particular themes, um, they capture points and periods of his life perfectly. With examples of his home, there was one aspect, like you, you, you will walk down a particular aisle and on the right and the left, there would be a, a particular theme. And one theme was actually uh, the kitchen of what it was like to be in the kitchen. Everything was perfectly placed. And on the other side, it was the living room setting. They were from, for the most part, a middle-class home. And they had this home, even with the spike, spice rack in the kitchen, depicted perfectly. And you got to see an idea of what it was like to even grow up in this home. Uh, so you get an idea of, of what influenced in the music, the black experience, pop culture, black American sports figures, literature and other sources. Now this was organized and curated by the family who maintains this estate and it's over 200 never before seen and rarely shown paintings, drawings, multimedia, some interviews, presentations, and artifacts that all tell the story of Jean-Michel 
from an intimate perspective. This is actually his bike that he rode. They actually had that there. There was a fantastic movie. And if you see this now, even how they display some of the graffiti, there are projectors that are cleverly placed throughout the museum that also paint different pictures on the wall to give you a different perspective to bring these themes to life. Absolutely exquisite. There's the, the vivid colors that you generally see, what's associated with him, to see these things up close and personal and to get into his head. I remember, I, I would always think that his images were childlike, which they are, but at the same time, I didn't appreciate like the genius of how difficult it is. I've come from an artist background and being trained to paint a particular way. There's nothing better. I've always appreciated artists who always do their own thing and find their own voice because that to me is the essence and the soul of, of individuals. You get this perfectly in this display here. This is one of my favorite pieces here or themes here. They actually had it set up like what his studio actually looked like and they replicated that down to a T and you can get an idea of artwork being laid, or, laid all over the place. He would paint from one picture to the next, whatever inspired him at that moment. They actually had paint on the actual floor. There was, he had multimedia things going on at the same time, because that's just how his brain was wired. So he would have television set up with movies playing in the background, music playing in one corner. Um, you would get these aspects and elements of these things here that will all bring you into his world. These paintings are just striking because you don't generally see this. They have their own signature voice and you can put them up to other artists' works and they, they stand out on their own. That's what, to me, what his work brought to life that many others had a hard time capturing. There's an actual jacket that he had over there in the corner and many other items that I didn't, to me, in my opinion, get a good job in capturing. But from what I was exposed or got a good idea of, his work was from the movie debut of one of my favorite actors was Jeffrey Wright who portrayed him in the movie Basquiat and that was a star-studded movie a lot of those actors from what I understand didn't get paid or receive little pay for what they did because they understood the contribution Julian Chernobyl I believe is the artist who actually was the director and galvanized got everybody together to do that particular film project and salute to him because I thought it was an excellent portrayal of bringing Basquiat's world into the public eye to give insight to people as to what he was able to do. And it's so unfortunate because he would still be alive today if it wasn't for some of the issues that he faced and get a sense and a feel for his work. You see some of his political things here with the police piece here, and that's just one of many things of how striking his work is. With the simplest of things, he could say, we'll give you so much, we're giving you less. These small words, the crossing out of words, and you get a sense of, of the color usage. And these images just like, they, they jump off of, I'm gonna say canvas, but he was known to paint on any and everything that he can get his hands on, which was another thing from a producer standpoint, you have to marvel at. Because this guy, if he couldn't find a canvas, he would make a canvas. And the world became his canvas, because he was known for just actually graffitiing or writing on walls. The, the, the world was his canvas and you had to appreciate that. And so once again here's another perfect example of some things that he would piece together. As you walk through the show as I mentioned before you get a, a good sense in certain themes that identify that they would put in order to give you a sense of what was reflective of what he potentially was going through at that time and definitely what influenced him. The certain things that are synonymous with him with this with the crown image. Iconic and it's one of the things that's definitely associated with Basquiat. The rich blues, the vibrant yellows, whatever colors that he would use, generally when they would be next to one another, they would pop, they would be very vivid, and they would be something that's memorable and striking to the point where undeniable with some exceptions like the crown that was just there if the colors weren't striking then the message that he had to convey that was even communicated verbally was just as profound and had that kind of gravitas and and force and power of something that 
you would resonate with and would certainly separate, once again, his imagery from the next person. This dollar bills, I didn't do too much diligence on focusing on what the actual pieces were themed or named because some of that you get within looking at his work within itself. You can just see some of the titles that may coincide with what it's actually named. He had quite a few that were untitled, like the piece that I mentioned that was the one of the highest pieces sold. His work had a playful, childlike element that he seemed to carry on throughout his life. And in the later works that, where he collaborated with Andy Warhol, those pieces are unreal and uncanny in the imagery and what they were able to accomplish together. So back to this particular show, when you are at a point where you, you walk around almost in a rectangular circle, and this is actually somewhat close to the end of the show, what's coming up soon is you'll see how these were some of the, a mixture of his paperworks outside of canvas. And this one looks like it was influenced by what he got off of a dollar bill, astronomy. Um, he had one particular piece that even uh, from, from music to being an ornithologist, he had these things captured in his work. When you were exiting the show, one of the last themes were, he actually, I did not know this, but had some amazing works at a particular club. He was a, this was a social scene that was pretty heavy back then. And these striking works here were absolutely massive. And you can get a sense of the scale. If you look at the people, and look at these gigantic works. I had no idea Basquiat even had works these large. So they created a theme of what it would have looked like with the club, in a club setting. And these were actually some of the works that were in or were featured or displayed in some of the clubs. This is a close up here, one, one of, of a monstrosity of a piece here. This is what some of it may have looked like in that club setting, beautiful arrangement. This show was absolutely excellent. If you have the opportunity to go to the show, take advantage of it. Tickets are pretty popular and they, they sell out quick all the time. But back to the paintings here, you can see how vivid the colors are, how striking the images are. And I can't express enough how mesmerized I was as I walked around. It actually ends out into the, to the um, shop of where you can purchase merchandise. That was a little disappointing just because some of the best pieces and they were sold out a lot but nevertheless absolutely amazing show i hope you enjoyed what i could try to cover but me saying this verbally is nothing like seeing it for yourself if you have the opportunity king pleasure is the show jean-michel basquiat if you get a chance to get to new york grab that opportunity and it will not disappoint thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the review